Hello, my precious brothers and sisters. Hope you guys are all being blessed. I want to share with you all a teaching the Lord gave me a few weeks back, and it was about fasting. Now, we know from a Christian perspective, fasting is nothing if it is not coupled with prayer. And we know prayer without fasting has no power at all. You're just beating against a brick wall, right? But for those of you who don't know, what exactly is fasting? Let's get to the basics. Now, fasting is a biblical practice or a way of giving up food and or drink for a period of time in order to humble oneself, draw closer to God and pray. Now, that's a biblical perspective, right? But fasting, you know, in and of itself, is just basically the absence of food and water, you know, food and or water. And for religious purposes or health purposes or even ritualistic purposes, right? Now, many of us have very difficult situations in our lives that just seem to be impossible to overcome. Whether it be certain habitual sins or seeking God for guidance on something you need to do and you're not getting an answer or it seems like the heavens are closed, right? We've all been there before. <laughs> or even dealing with demonic oppression that just seemed to won't go away, you know, like demons showing up or you're seeking deliverance from uh, a spirit that's possessing you and you can't seem to get free. Or me, you know, if if you're like me, at times you feel like God is a million miles away. <laughs> and no matter what you do, you can't seem to reach him. You know, whatever the case may be, this is where fasting comes in. This is where fasting is powerful. This is where fasting breaks down the barriers and the doors, you know, that are in our ways. Right. Fasting adds a certain grace and power to our prayers guys that we would not normally have and because of that it's a highly needed discipline not wanted but needed discipline in this time this time you know these last days especially for the body of christ because now we're just living in the world and we're just living every day you know according to the flesh in this world where the flesh rules and dominates everyday life, and I'm talking about it dominates all of your desires, your emotions, your thoughts, you know, and even your perspective, the way you look at life. Fasting is a spiritual discipline that shuts that down. It shuts down the flesh. It removes the flesh as our master and it turns the attention of our soul, our mind, to our spirit. All right? Now, look at this. Th this is a kick to it. All right? So, every human being, right? Me, you, every single person on the planet that is a human being has a spirit. All right? You have a spirit. You are a spirit being. You have a soul, but you live within a body. The body, this is what we call our flesh, right? When we are born into this world, when we're first born into this world, our spirit man is dead, right? It's dead. Like it's non, it's not that it's non-existent. It's just, it's, it's dull. It's inactive. And this is because of the curse of original sin, right? Now, in essence, who we are as human beings, we are a spirit, right? We're a spirit being. But th that part of us needs to be reacted, reactivated or reborn, you know? That is why the Lord Jesus said in the Gospel of St. John, you must be born again. You must be born of water and the spirit. You must be born of the spirit, right? In other words, your spirit man has to be revived. 
So when a person comes to believe in Jesus, right, they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior by faith in him, right? And and they have their sins forgiven. They repent of their sins to ask their, the Lord to forgive them of their sins. And also they are baptized. You know, you have to be baptized because the Lord, you say, the Lord says you have to be born of water and the Spirit. That part of them, that spirit man, is revived, is brought back to life. It's brought back to life, right? Now, why am I telling you this? Because it's important for you to learn why you need to fast. This, this is important for you to know because it shows you why you need to fast and what fasting does to you as a three-part being, right? Now, your spirit man, your spirit man is important because that's the part where God communicates himself to you right god communicates himself to you because he's spirit in essence god himself is spirit in essence and he made him like he made us like himself so we are also a spirit in essence we're spirit beings so god communicates to us spirit to spirit right now here's the problem the reason we don't hear the lord and and this is mostly the reasons we don't hear the Lord, right? Now, we must learn to train our soul to submit to the Spirit, to hear the sp our Spirit inside of us, right? And one of the ways we do that is through fasting and prayer. When you fast, you turn your soul away from the body, and you put the soul, and you turn it, to the spirit, your spirit man, the, the part of you where God communicates him, himself to you. Now, you can't just receive spirit to spirit, right? Because we're in the body. But what happens is God speaks to your spirit and your spirit communicates it to your soul. But because your soul is dull to the spirit, you cannot, you cannot hear the voice of the Lord, right? So this is why fasting and prayer is so important. It's because it turns the soul to the spirit. Now you can hear the Lord better. You can receive visions and dreams, right? This is just one of the many benefits of fasting. That it opens us up, us up to hearing and receiving from God because it turns the soul to the spirit, man. All right? Now, when it comes to receiving anything from God, when it comes to receiving anything from the Lord, there's a certain heart posture that is required, right? And that is humility. The great thing about fasting is that it humbles the soul before God. It humbles your soul, your mind. Whenever there is major pride involved, God will not communicate himself to a person who has pride within them, right? Or let's say God is about to send judgment on a land due to sin. The best ways, the best way to humble ourselves and get ourselves in alignment with God and correct our behavior is through fasting. All right. Now, in case you may not understand what I'm saying, let's look at some examples from the scriptures. So let's check out Psalm 35. And this is verses 11 through 13, right? So David is crying out to God. And he's saying, God, people are repaying me evil for all the good I've done. You know, basically, I'm, I've am i done all I can to do good for these people. And all they do is hate me and try to revile me, you know. So David says in his psalm, he says, fierce witnesses rise up. They ask me things that I do not know. They reward me evil for good to the sorrow of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. David says, I humbled my soul with fasting. So David humbled himself before the Lord to intercede for his people, right? So how David humbled his soul was that he afflicted it with fasting. To humble himself before God so that his heart posture before the Lord would be right and correct, right? If you still don't understand, let's take a look at another example. 
So Ahab has just been judged by the Lord. The Lord has sent the prophet Elijah to come and to um, uh, tell Elijah that he's going to chastise him because of his wickedness and his pride, you know, especially all the things he did with Jezebel. All right. So after the Lord had just finished pronouncing judgment on Ahab through Elijah, the prophet, it says, when Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and fasted. He lay in sackcloth and went about mourning. It says, verse, this is uh, 1 Kings, 1 Kings um, chapter 21, verses 27 through 29. And verse, this is verse 28. It says, Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. And God says, Have you noticed how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself, I will not bring this disaster in his day. I will bring it on his house in the days of his son. Why did God do that? Because God always fulfills his word. When he says he brings judgment on those who hate his covenant down to the third generation, punishing the sons for the iniquity of the fathers. That's why the Lord says, I will not bring the calamity in his day, but in the day of his son. But he says, because Ahab humbled himself because he fasted, I won't bring the calamity. Now, when we humble ourselves, the Lord always responds in mercy and compassion because the Lord always resists pride. He hates pride. Ever since the sin of Lucifer, God always opposes those who are proud, but he lifts up the, the favor. He lifts up in favor and grace those who are humble. That's why the Blessed Mother in her Magnificate says, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has um, lifted up the lowly, right? So the way to, to obtain favors from the Lord and growing more deeply in the things of the Spirit is through fasting and prayer, right? Because it humbles us before God. And so God can communicate himself to us, right? Now, Humbling us also leads to repentance, right? Because with humility comes repentance. So fasting also helps us with repentance, right? So if we are to have any relationship with God, there must be repentance. You cannot have a relationship with the Lord if you do not repent. I don't care what I don't care what preacher uh taught teaches you you know whatever doctrine that you can still be right with god you cannot be right with god you cannot have a relationship with him without repentance when the lord came after his 40 days of fasting and praying after he had just been baptized the first words he says was repent if the lord jesus himself says repent that means repentance is key to if we are to have any relationship with the lord so, as a great example of how fasting can lead to repentance, I'm always reminded of the story of Jonah and Nineveh in the Bible. So, the Lord told Jonah, go to Nineveh and preach against it the message that I'll tell you, right? Jonah went and preached the message and he said, in 40 days, Nineveh will be overthrown. Now, it says the people believed God. They believed the message that God sent through his prophet Jonah. And so all the people proclaimed a fast and everybody put on sackcloth and they cried out to God. Even the king himself, he said, when the king heard it, when it got to his ears, he issued a decree that no man or even the animals is to eat or drink anything. Let them all lay in sackcloth and cry loudly to God and beg him for mercy, right? Now, this is what catches me. It says that when God saw by their actions that they turned from their evil way, he repented of the disaster he threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. Now, it says God saw by their actions that they turned, right? Now, I can guarantee you that one of those actions was fasting with their prayers, you know, as well as their turning away from the violence, 
right? Because fasting is a way of showing God, Lord, I am truly sorry for this sin. I do not intend to repeat it. And I'm humbling my soul before you to show God that I am truly repentant of that. It's a it's a it's it's an action to show the Lord, hey Lord, I am sorry. I am I am sincerely repenting of this sin. I want nothing to do with it anymore. Right? And an, and another example where the Lord calls his people to repentance through fasting is in the prophet Joel. Right? Now through the in the book of the prophet uh, Joel, there's calamity that is prophesied over the land. And so Joel tells all the ministers and the priests, weep and wail at the, at the altar and call an assembly, gather the assembly and consecrate a fast to the Lord as a sign of repentance. Then in chapter two, he prophesies. The Lord speaks and says, now it says, now, therefore, this is Joel two verses 12 through 14. It says, now, therefore, says the Lord God. Turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. So here, the Lord calls the people of Israel to turn their hearts back to him, to turn to him with fasting and with weeping and mourning as a sign of their repentance. And a plea to not bring the calamity upon them that he said he would do. Right? So whenever they wanted to avert the anger of God or the judgment of God, they humbled themselves and and repented in prayer and fasting. Right? Now, another thing fasting does is it, you know, it also not only puts us in a place of humility and helps us with repentance, but it brings us back in communion with God, right? And helps us find the Lord, even when the Lord seems quiet or just distant, or if it seems he's, you know, left us in complete desolation. Now, the Lord hinted hints at this in the Gospel of Matthew, but I didn't really catch it until one day when I read it, I'm saying, oh, like, so it's like when the Lord isn't there or when you can't feel him, that's the time of fasting and praying. So this is Matthew chapter 9, and it's verses 14 to 15. It says, Then the disciples of John came to him, came to Jesus, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can a wedding guest fast while the bridegroom is with them? In another translation, it says, Can a wedding guest mourn while the bridegroom is with him? Because fasting is also a way of mourning as well. That's why it says, turn to me with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Because fasting also is a way of mourning. And the Lord says, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. But it says, can, he says, can a wedding guest fast or mourn while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them. Did you catch that? And in those days, they will fast. So what is the Lord teaching us here? The disciples have Jesus with them, right? He's physically present with them. They have his love, his comfort, his friendship. Therefore, they do not need to fast. Why do they need to fast if they have the Lord right there with them? But then he says, the days will come when his presence will be taken away from them and they will need his guidance. And then they shall fast. Now, the Lord expects us to implement fasting as a regular part of our walk with him. It is one of the three main acts of righteousness, which is prayer, almsgiving, and fasting, right? The Lord taught us three the three main acts of righteousness. Prayer, false, almsgiving, and, uh, and fasting, right? He didn't say, if you fast. He said, when you fast, meaning he expects us to fast. Fasting is powerful because it also liberates us from demonic forces and oppression. Have you ever found yourself struggling to receive deliverance or rid rid a certain sin out of your life that you're struggling with? 
for example, if you if you know that you have a problem with lust, right? If you know you have a problem with lust and you cannot seem to get that out of your life, then you need to go and in prayer and fasting, asking the Lord to rid you of that. Because what that's going to do is it's going to put down the flesh. Therefore, the the urge to give in to those temptations, it will be less and less and less until the Lord gives you the grace to overcome it. If Jesus himself had to fast to overcome, what makes us think we don't have to fast? Because certain demons only come out through prayer and fasting, right? So I hope this video blesses you guys and gives you more of a desire to also draw closer to God and seek him through prayer and fasting. The Lord always rewards those who diligently seek him, right? And the Lord has a message for us on fasting as well, which I'm going to share with you guys in the next message. All right. God bless you all and take care. The Lord be with you.